anyway, I'm sorry my review is very disjointed, but it, I keep sparking off other things. This Burton guy, I thought, it's like, you goose on the TARDIS, it's like, it's bigger on the inside. It's like, it's a box, but it's bigger on the inside. What the heck's going on? But it doesn't do any of that. It comes out the TARDIS, it's like, jolly good, uh, I'll get back to the office. It's like, it's like, what? you just been inside the TARDIS. Which, by the way, I think the TARDIS and this story, Sylvester's TARDIS, from seeing it all majestic and wonderful and new here, especially Matt's TARDIS, seeing Sylvester's TARDIS, it looks like a shed. And I liked how wobbly it was. But, ooh. Well, see, his TARDIS is a bit unimpressive, so I don't know what happened to it before this story, but I do like the TARDIS. Um, my next point, is Mal. It's like, like, you go to that box where it's got the egg in, and it's, that's just, that's just cheap wrapping paper from a gift from the card shop. That just won't know. And she goes, like, and, they, and she starts him, ah! Before they've even, before that thing's even done anything. She's just said hello to this alien woman. She knows this woman is an alien, I assume. Just let her share a room with her and just go, ah! Well, duh, it's an alien woman. She's giving her alien stuff. And that's before that green slime thing hatched out of the egg. Now, the best prop they had in this episode was the green slimy robotic baby thing. But two minutes later, they changed it to a baby, an actual baby with a face painted in a baby girl. That just, it's like, oh, that actually looks like a cool prop. And then, what? Okay. What confused me mostly was this Billy guy. Is he actually meant to be human? Because there's this, there's this, okay, if I'd say, okay, it's got a normal dress on. And then it goes in the view, and she's got this alien slimy baby thing. And it's like, hey. That's all he does throughout the story, I thought that was quite... That just utterly confused me, it's just like, hey. Oh, she's grown another two foot. Hey. See, the alien sort of makes these noises and has these, like, cigarette substitute sticks, what it looks like. And she plays up the banana. Now, wh why, why, why? Why did they bother doing all that chasing sequence just to use a speaker at the at the holiday camp? What and um, what disappointed me slightly because this is my first time seeing Sylvester McCoy as Doctor, but after seeing the grandeur and present screen presence of Eccleston Tanner and Matt, was that he's like he's just something because when you watch Eccleston Tanner or Matt. They're taking over the screen for presents. But Sylvester, it's just like, he's, he's got in the corner and then he says something which I can't quite make out right. I couldn't understand what he was saying a lot of the time because I couldn't hear him properly. It's just, I was disappointed. That's the doctor. He's meant to be amazing and heroic and he's, he's just mumbling and stuff. It's like, what? He's not this big heroic doctor. So that's why it felt like to me from seeing New Who to Classic Who, especially Sylvester. Now this, I've seen some earlier episodes like really start, the real, the beginning ones, and it's like really popular sci-fi growing up, and it's just gone, this, uh, this just looks so kiddy, and just, uh, like, what, wh what, wh it's just, got a lot Kitty and just so I don't know how to describe it, I don't know how to describe lots of things. But it is from being proper drama, it's just a kid kiddies program, which isn't even the best kiddies program at that time. So that was interesting. Now when they cut I actually I did actually get fooled by this, that when they cut to 
why smaller I thought they actually had was like what how come they've got the TARDIS and then I heard a bit of the commentary and said kids and Lundies want to realise they have TARDISes everywhere sorry who's it whoever's prison doing but they have TARDISes everywhere so obviously I did get fooled by that but it just seemed to, to a sharp cut to that it's, it's just totally confused me and that, well, as I was watching it I just didn't understand it now anyway, it's Joe Griffiths played Rick. The, why did they make her do the Welsh accent? They should have just... Cause she didn't technically need to have a Welsh accent. She didn't need... Cause she's probably a good actress, but I thought that the fact that she's doing the accent totally hindered her, prop, her acting. It's like, oh, Doctor! Sorry, I can't do it. Oh, oh hang on. I like being can I do? And oh doctor will you take me in the TARDIS? I like Billy. Oh look after your bike, Billy. It's like take like doing a mouth. It's like uh oh, trying to do an accent. It's just no, she didn't need to do that accent. It would have been nice if she because that's all that came across to me is that she was concentrating on doing the accent a lot. And obviously the acting and the emotions didn't come through. Now the most odd thing to me was, er, uh, see, okay, see this belly, this human, human guy, who, who apparently she's been hanging out with since they were kids and she loves him, and he's going off in an alien spaceship with an alien woman to repopulate the species and gave and Billy goes, Hey, look after my back. She goes, Oh Billy, of course I will. It's like what? He's going off to repopulate a species on another planet. And just yeah, look after your back. That that's what confused me about this episode, just nobody seems to have any emotional reaction to the fact that there are aliens. They're human beings. But this episode just at that bit Burton where he gets his staff in so we've, and he tries to get across to him they have got sort of crisis but he doesn't want to panic him. And most of the staff are just like eh. Like, like, why the? But well, I'm not surprised. I mean, you would be like that if you worked in that holiday camp. I loved how they had Avon Field, like one child's playground toy in it. <laughs> like what? And that was meant to represent a holiday camp. But let me put so many dates because I've gone off already. Oh, there's a guy on the bus. He's wearing a gold jacket and he's taking a little at John Barrowman. I was like, Barrowman! That's Danny Barrowman! See that really? Oh, yes, consulting my dates now. Yeah, well, I thought a lot of it looked like it was made of corrugated cardboard, a lot of the set. But, but mainly at the start of it and part on, it looked like corrugated cardboard. What? The yeah, stuff they were doing in America at that time, and we had corrugated cardboard. Okay, this, I mean, this has got to be an episode that's so bad it's good. That is a right laugh. What I did like was that it's good, it's good pace to it, it wasn't boring. 